We spent a good portion of this past weekend talking about some of our standing poses. Standing poses being our lunges, warrior poses, and anything where your feet are on the ground, they're very active poses. So active stretching versus passive stretching. Active stretching and active poses are ones where you're engaging, you're um, engaging and lengthening. So you, you get a full sort of body feeling. So you have to be active within this pose in order to hold it. A passive pose is one where you can completely relax. Thinking of like Shavasana or um, lying down or if you're, you're, you have props, maybe it's a spinal twist where you can just let go completely. Of course, you can have passive poses that are also very active or you can flip flop. So let's say you're on the ground and you start to engage and actually lengthen and feel it and, and do a little bit more with your body, that can be an active pose. But it's hard to have a passive pose as a standing pose. So let's just say all of the standing poses are active poses. If you're teaching a power yoga or vinyasa yoga, usually about 80% of your class is going to be active poses. Not standing poses, but active. So you're actively stretching and feeling and engaging and you're in sort of some work mode, work and stretch, relax, all of it together. Uh, so you will, for the most part, have a lot of active poses. So we have to go through these standing poses. It's also where you're gonna find more of the alignment hiccups because you have more length towards the top through your entire body. So more room for some errors as you work your way down. So there are two kinds of lunges, but I'm actually gonna switch this to three. So two kinds of lunges, one would be an externally rotated hip lunge and the other would be an internally rotated hip lunge. What does that mean? A crescent lunge where your back heel is lifted and your feet are on railroad tracks, your hips are facing forward, that's an internally, that back leg is internally rotating towards your body, that is one style of lunge. The modification for a crescent lunge is to take the knee down not to step closer is to take the knee down an intensive vacation might be to step the back foot a little farther back maybe get a little bit lower uh, a couple others you can lift the front heel um, that's just a different variation not necessarily intensified and then there are arm variations galore so you can do loose arms cactus arms, hands behind the back, eagle arms. So that's where the create, creative part comes in. So you can be in a, a lunge, which is a single pose. It's called lunge, crescent lunge. And then add on from there without actually being in a different pose at all. So that's, that's really helpful knowing that you can add some breath work in a single lunge. So you're isolating the lower body or maybe you're moving up and down. So, so many variations, but let's get off of that tangent right now and go back to our styles of lunges. So we've got the internally rotated lunge, a crescent lunge, and we have the externally rotated hip lunge, which is a warrior, like a warrior two. So that back leg, the heel spins down, leg is straight, you're externally rotating the femur, the back leg, to open up the hips, often directly out to the side. So here is our lunge this way, right? We've got hips forward. When we do a warrior pose, our hips turn, level, give them level. Now I'm not in a very wide warrior, but you see the difference, hips are to the side. Our front toes are still facing the front of the room. This is internally rotated, externally rotated. So the reason I'm gonna say now there are three different kinds is because there's the internal rotation, crescent lunge. There's the external rotation with the back heel down, open hip warrior two variations, but there's also the internally rotated lunge with your heel down, which would be like a warrior one. It could be, it would be like a pyramid pose where the hips are trying to face forward, but your back heel is down. So instead of heel lifted, it's down and you're in it more of a warrior stance. So two kinds of stances, the crescent lunge stance, warrior stance, two kinds of lunges regarding the hips and pelvis the internally rotated and externally rotated, and they do sort of combine once in a while, like with a warrior one, that would be internally rotating in the hip, but your back heel is down. Understandable? So a warrior one is closer in relation to a 
crescent lunge than it would be to a warrior two as far as this hip region goes um, your back heel is down but the hips are internal not external with the warrior one it gets a little bit confusing that's okay we will work on this throughout the course of time so knowing that we've got the internal and the external with sequencing, if you're doing multiple poses in a row, standing poses, it's good to not necessarily combine the internal with the external. So stay with a sequence that's all internal rotated hip, that crescent lunge or warrior stance, warrior one, and then stay with the open hip sequence, like warrior two, to side angle, triangle, wherever it is that our hips are open externally. So there's a bunch of poses that are external rotation and a bunch of poses that are internal. And we can go through each of those in that way I can make a list. Here's a bunch of internal ones, here's a bunch of external ones. This is ways that you can like combine some poses using these kind of buckets of, of poses. And of course there are outliers. So sometimes going from a lunge to a warrior two might be in your practice, but to continuously go back and forth between external, internal, external, internal, without switching from right to left, it gets a little bit funky wonky for the hips. So it's not so great. So uh, we also made lists with our lunge, um, warrior two, crescent lunge, warrior two, and warrior one, and some other poses of how you, where you would go, come from to get into the pose, and where we, you would go to. So that was getting into a little bit of transitions. So example, I always just do a warrior two example. That's sort of going to be our example. And you can make these lists for yourself and then ask me if you have any questions about it. So let's say you've got warrior two, right? I'm just going to be right here, warrior two. How do we get into this pose? Where are we coming from? So making a list. We can come from, yes, we can come from a crescent lunge or a low lunge, spin the back heel down, warrior two. So just going one step back, where are you coming from? You could also come back to warrior two from side angle, from a triangle, from wide leg stance, from, oh, we made a pretty long list. So warrior two, you can come from a lot of places into warrior two. And where you can come from is often where then you can also go to, uh, from warrior two, but you, uh, you can also go to a couple different other places. So half moon, uh, you can actually cartwheel the hands down into handstands. Uh, that's an option. Oftentimes you're going to reverse warrior or side angle or back down to plank pose or actually the first step before you hit plank pose or down dog from warrior two is to get into a low lunge. So first you would go down, lift the back heel and you're down in a low lunge. So that is the first step. So I'm talking about the very first pose, the very next pose you would get into. So you can't go from warrior two to downward dog without first going through a lunge without first going through um, that transition and stepping back. So uh, you can go to low lunge, open up, do more. You can step your foot forward to standing pose. You can go from a standing pose, stepping back into the warrior stance if we're setting up that way. So there's a lot of ways to and out of that pose. When we get into poses like side angle and triangle, there are a lot less ways. And warrior two is one you'll have to pass through a lot of times. So that's sort of one of our base pose. You'll pass through warrior two to get to side angle, to get to triangle, and then come back up to warrior two before moving on to the next pose. So warrior two, and also same with crescent lunge, same thing there. There's a lot of ways to get into a lunge. You can step back, step forward from down dog, you can come into it from a side plank, step your foot forward. There's a bunch of creative ways there. If you are just starting out, keep it simple. Either step from down dog or uh, step from your hands and knees, step back. Um, do something that's not going to confuse yourself right now until you gain the uh, experience uh, and personal practice and how it feels in you before you tell others to do it. So. It doesn't have to be crazy creative, at least to start with. You are going to get way more sick of your sequences before anyone else in class ever does. So um, warrior two lunges, you will pass through lunge, low lunge, um, warrior two for many of your standing poses. 
Right. We did get into a little bit of alignment stuff with triangle and revolve triangle. So the only thing I want to mention on that is triangle. It can get a little bit confusing with the hips. For triangle. So your legs are about one and a half or one leg distance, distance apart. Maybe you're coming from warrior two, straighten your leg. I often take the back foot in just a little bit. So our hips are not forward, but they're not also not squared up to the side here. So you're not like torquing on the leg at all to trying to get the hips squared to the side. They're in a neutral position. And for me, when I come into neutral, if my feet are in the right alignment, they're a little facing this, they're a little bit facing the side. Then we take the back hip, bump it back, like, hey, hey, reach forward, come forward, and then bring the hand down. And we want length through both sides of the body. What you'll see oftentimes in many other classes is hip squared, and it'll be a side bend. And that is not triangle pose, at least not what I teach as triangle pose. Triangle pose is an extension, not a side bend. So it feels a little bit, so bringing this hip in and back feels a little bit like a twist, a lot of bit like both sides of the back or a waist are lengthening. A little bit as a back bend because you have, there's a tendency to lean forward, press back, and then opening up the arms. And you should feel back here, you should also feel the right hamstring. Oh, you should feel, oh, you should feel right here. Also feel the back of the right hamstring. Those are the biggest stretches. So we did go through triangle pose a little bit more in depth because that's one that you don't get a lot of cueing on. It seems like a very simple pose, but in, in reality, there's a lot going on. And sure, this is, this is not gonna hurt you if you're doing a side bend in this pose. It's not gonna hurt you. Just you're never going to be able to touch your toes, not that that needs to be a goal, but you, you can feel a little bit more when you're not restricted on the side bend, you're able to get a little bit deeper into the hamstrings and their inner thighs in order to feel that benefit and that stretch, that strength, rather than being constricted with the side bend. So when I do triangle pose, the purpose for most of my sequences is the legs, the main feeling, not necessarily feeling that side bend. Uh, length through the outer side. That makes sense, hopefully. Um, try triangle on for yourself. Another way we got into it was to go starting down in pyramid pose, hips, hips squared up, you know, in that internal rotation, but then to open up from the bottom. So the hips will open a little bit, not too much. Uh, the body opens and we reach up. So that was the second way in the triangle. Try both ways, see what you love, see what you don't love and see what makes you, you know, feel, what difference it makes you feel doing both ways. Triangle, revolve triangle, half moon, look into those poses, not half moon, um, warrior one, warrior two, crescent lunge, low lunge. Um, so our homework really for this was to read through those poses, practice them on for yourself, maybe with a partner or a teacher, and you could even take a video of yourself to see your alignment. Not to say that you you have to be in perfect alignment at all, ever, um, but you just to see how your body is and see what you know m variations or modifications you could add to the pose. Or if you need a block or uh, want to use a block or any props, those could also be available to you. After we went through our standing poses, I had everyone find this sheet of paper. It's called the foundational cueing exercise. So it takes the foundational cues that we went through last time and puts it into sort of a worksheet or a script that we can use to write out um, our own way of teaching a single pose. So that would be your homework, would be to pick a pose, maybe multiple poses, if you wanna try this with multiple standing poses. So any of the poses that we've gone through or that, that pique your interest, pick a simple one. So simple, not, it's not always easy, but they're pretty simple. You know the poses, something that you'll teach in every class. Warrior two, crescent lunge, um, maybe you wanna pick triangle pose or one of the standing poses that that you know that you're going to have to set up with alignment and do so very often. So 
our uh, example, again, I'm going to use warrior two. So what you're going to do is practice your cues while in a single pose, not moving. So if you were practice teaching someone else, they'd already be in the pose. So you're not cueing them into the pose. Let's say you're already in it. This is where you're starting. This is where you start this worksheet. This is where you start your script. So you've got your person in warrior two. Now, what do you say? So in here, to list three inhale and exhale actions and directions. What is that? Inhale and, inhale and exhale cues. Inhales, we're typically lengthening, stretching, opening, um, lifting. And on an exhale, we're typically softening, engaging, contracting, grounding, pressing. So knowing those two things, think of inhale and then say an action a body part and direction. So warrior two, inhale, reach, that's a verb, reach your hands or fingertips long. That's be an inhale, reach your fingertips long. Exhale, soften your shoulders down your back. Inhale, inhale, <laughs> press down through the back heel. That's not really press. Lengthen through that back leg. Exhale, ground down through the blade of the back foot. Inhale, lengthen through the crown over your head, feel taller. Exhale, bend that front knee a little bit deeper and press into the big toe. So it's going back and forth and in time you can drop the inhale and the exhale. But, but to add that and just to know that typically on that inhale you're lifting, lengthening exhaling your grounding so even if you're here when you, if you drop the inhale and exhale it's saying reach through your fingertips soften your shoulders down and back it's just sometimes easier for some people to have a breath attached to it because you're able to then feel and send that breath while you're doing that action so three inhale and exhale um, actions for the pose then mention the gaze point for warrior two, your gaze is directly over your front fingers or beyond the front fingers. Find a focal point, your drishti. Mention distal points, two distal points. Distal points are the farthest from the midline of the body. Where are you reaching? These also can be known as energy lines. Where are your energy lines in your body? So the fingertips, you may have already mentioned them if you said an inhale or exhale cue through the fingertips. Distal point through the back of the heel. Back heel is the farthest point from the body and also the crown of the head. And then three tendencies or contraindications or what tends to happen. In warrior two, there's a tendency to blank, fill in the blank. So today, let's fill in the blank. And you should feel fill in the blank with warrior two. There's a tendency to collapse in the front knee. So today let's press through the pinky toe and stack the knee over the ankle and you should feel an external rotation and engagement in your right hip. Something like that. There's a tendency to hunch the shoulders. So today let's draw the shoulder blades down the back of the body and you should feel a little bit more relaxed. You get the point, right? There's a tendency to look around the room. So today, let's take that gaze directly over the front fingertips, keeping your focus and maintaining your breath. There's a tendency to hold your breath. So today, let's try to breathe a little bit deeper and bring awareness there, and you should feel uh, a little bit more concentrated and focused. And then mention two modifications and two intensifications. For warrior two, a modification, to back off a little bit is to step the feet a bit closer. Another modification might be to real, uh, flip the hands and bend the elbows or take your hands to your heart instead. Uh, offer that for the shoulders. Because for modifications, we want to keep, you know, uh, stay safe in the shoulders, the hips, and the knees, and the low back. So thinking about it's hips, low back, and knees, and knees oftentimes you go a joint up and work with the hips on that one. So you wanna keep the shoulders safe, the low back safe, and the knees safe. So in what ways can you offer modification to do that if someone's struggling in one of those areas? Uh, intensification, you can get longer in your stance, a little bit lower. You could close your eyes. 
that could be a intensification, um, or you could take longer breaths. Just find a way to intensify. Lift the front heel. That could work too. Just a variation. So there are there are so many ways that you could do this. Please grab this foundational cueing exercise or a piece of paper in your notebook. Write down a pose. You do three inhale exhale actions direction. One gaze point. Two distal points. Three tendencies or contraindications two modifications and two intensifications. And do this for your poses, for your uh, standing poses, ones that we've gone through. And if you are so inclined, you can do this for many poses. It would be awesome if you did. More practice means you're more, you'll get more comfortable with this faster.